Hello and happy Sunday. So you might recognize this as my um, history through documents binder where I've um, put this ephemera into an album as my own history vault. So I have all of these different items to look at for the purposes of art or study or research. For example, if you want to, you know, copy what or duplicate what a, a certain font um, back then looked like and so forth. Or if you're just fascinated in the history, I have, I'm assembling this album and it's got different time periods in history covered here. You've probably seen my other videos where I go through this. So, but you might notice there's a big gap here from Jack the Ripper, the 1880s until the 1920s on this page right here. So, um, to fill in that gap, they made a whole first world war collection of reproduced memorabilia right here. So I wanted to look through it and maybe even put some stuff in my book. So, uh, the, although this is quite a handsome uh, set here, um, and on the back it shows you the different things you get in this collection. You get, um, read all about it, uh, newspapers, how the war was reported in the Daily Graphic and War News. Uh, the first edition of the satirical Wipers Times, produced at the battlefront. Um, it's like a, a zine that the soldiers made at the battlefront. Uh, ephemera from the heat of battle, including soldiers' handbooks, secret papers, and execution of desert deserters. Um, home front leaflets and so forth. A Red Cross program. Poster images, uh, miscellaneous images, tobacco cards. And you might have seen my tobacco card video from the other day. They, in fact, a lot of these are reproduced tobacco cards. Um, if you look at this, the, the border of this is obviously too big to be a tobacco card. But, um, so yeah, there's some interesting stuff in here. And I thought might be interesting to look at it. These are the tobacco cards. Um, it's two packs of them. And we have this pack of looks like postcard size items. A pack of larger things like newspapers. A pack of posters. And then what it appears to be ephemera letters and so forth. So Let's um, go through this and consider adding to this book. So for the tobacco cards, I have, uh, I have two types of collector pages. Um, and I think this is probably more suitable. So I probably need two. So let's, let's uh, go back to 1914 and let's take a look at the times of the Great War to End All Wars. So, and these are uh, very much like the tobacco cards that we looked at in my video from the other day. We'll go through these. And this set. This set is called, uh, well, it's various sets. 
the Great War and so forth. They come apart very easily. Okay. So let's take a look at these cards. Um, this has second Lieutenant G.T. Doral, Victoria Cross. Uh, probably someone who, if he got the Victoria Cross, I'm guessing he probably didn't make it. I hope he made it. Let's put these over here. And put that in here. This is uh, hand grenades in the trenches. Of course, we know World War One was a lot of uh, trench warfare. It was the first uh, major war that used trench warfare. Uh, Private George Wilson, Victoria Cross. There's one of the old timey World War One tank, those big tanks they had. They were look like monsters. I mean, they were sort of uh, unreal to look at. If you ever saw Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, you might remember when um, they're in the Republic of Haiti, which is supposed to be like modern day Turkey. And they provided the Germans with this gigantic tank. My question is, is oh, I don't think I like these paints. Like they come right out the bottom too. Well, no, where's the pocket at? Yeah, they come right out the bottom. We need a different. These are lousy. Let's get the different one. I picked wrong when I got these. These sheets are better. I hope. Yeah. Okay. Put this tank in here. Is it backwards? Yeah. The Victoria Cross. The grenades in the trenches. Okay, this is John Travers, Cornwell, Victoria Cross. These are Victoria Cross heroes is the name of the set. Age 16 years. It's hard for me to believe that World War I was 100 years ago. When I was a kid, there were still World War I veterans who were fully employed still working air war we had a neighbor um down the street when i was a little kid and he was an old man but he worked with my dad uh, and he drew a picture of a doughboy for me on a piece of yellow notebook paper and i thought that was really cool so he could you know and i because he was, we were gotten a conversation about what the uniforms looked like, and he was talking about how the helmets looked different. He drew this great picture with that, uh, that sort of flat helmet that they wore, the Doughboys.
it's it's cool to how this is done like an old tobacco card. It's a, the ship, the deck of a ship, and those giant, giant ship guns they had. So World War One was uh, started in in the city of Sarajevo when um, Franz Ferdinand and his wife were in a motorcade, and first uh, some assassins tried to throw grenades at the motorcade, and that didn't work. And but then eventually another assassin was able to use a handgun and, and shoot Franz Ferdinand and his wife, Archduke Franz Ferdinand. And then that uh, action in Sarajevo was what the uh, caused the Prussians to uh, team up with Tur Austria and Turkey and create the Central Powers. And also with... Um, and against France and um, oh, Belgium, Great Britain, and before you knew it, the powers all picked sides, and the um, United States even joined in after a while. And it was such a ridiculously bloody affair. They called it the war to end all wars, optimistically hoping that it would. That nothing like this ridiculous and terrible, costly, whatever happened again. And, of course, for many, a myriad of reasons, a multitude of reasons, it did happen again. Um, just 20 years later, practically... And it was, uh, there, there's so many reasons it happened, but the, uh, the thing that sticks out for most people is this, the lack of humanity from World War I. The, uh, how it, it almost, this is a bit of, a, of an exaggeration, but picture a whole bunch of first cousins. Versus what they were, the uh, these were the grandchildren of Queen Victoria fighting against each other. Uh, Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany was the grandson of Queen Victoria. The King of England was the grandson of Queen Victoria. The Tsarina of Russia was the granddaughter of Queen Victoria. These were relatives fighting each other, but it was the poor people who were getting killed, and this led to uh, a tremendous level of apathy and disillusionment that sort of characterized the 1920s particularly in Paris they called that those people the lost generation because um they felt lost they felt like all the structure and everything they were raised with that they were brought up to believe didn't really exist so this is a a, a red cross program of entertainment in aid of local workrooms, Saturday, January 12th, 1918, at 3.15 p.m. So it's for three pence, or to, probably to get into the entertainment. And the entertainment was um, selections and dances by Caledonian Boys, vocal duet Watchmen, What of the Night, by Bombardier T. Bacon and Private A.C. Hicks, a song... In an Old Fashioned Town by Mr. G. Brooks, a song There's a Land by Miss Florence Taylor, a song Mare My Girl by Bombardier T. Bacon, again, a harp solo, Bursus by Miss Muriel Cole, Ballet, Jack Frost and the Snowflakes, um, by these young ladies here, including uh, another girl named Muriel, um, a song, Roses of Picardy, 
then the lute player, some cello solos, another song, a recitation of a, of a poem, um, selections and dances, again, after the intermission, um, so just just a night of entertainment. This was also all live because you know this was a hundred years ago. So let's get a page for this. And what do we have here? Um, Madam, in reply to your inquiry addressed to British Red Cross Society, I am commanded by the Army Council to inform you that the soldier named above has been reported in a casualty list which has reached this office as having been killed in action on the 14th of August, 1918. I am to express the sympathy of the Army Council with the soldiers' relatives. I am, Madam, your obedient servant. So it's a form letter. Um, think about that for a second. So many young men were dying that they made a form letter to inform the families that their loved ones were dead. The... the they would go on to try to refine that in the next war. But when I'm, when I'm speaking of a lack of humanity, that's a good example. Um, there was a, a distinct lack of humanity happening in the world at this time. There was a lack of value for human life. I, when I studied history at Auburn, I um, remember looking at old newspapers from the thirties and so forth. And two or three pages into the newspaper, there might be a story about 13 school kids dying in a bus. It just, people didn't have the level of humanity. Um, and I, I'm not exactly sure why, but maybe because the mortality rate was higher back then. Maybe we're, we feel like life is more precious now, at least in some, some places. Of course, that doesn't apply to the whole world. Um, this says consolidation of trenches, localities, and craters after assault and capture with a note on rapid wiring. This is a guidebook, um, the handbook for trench warfare. The illustrations. I mean, this is a perfectly good copy of a, of a Crinch Warfare guidebook. Here's a flyer to enlist with your local friends in the Wandsworth Regulars, 13th Service Battalion, East Surrey Regiment, Commanding Officer Lieutenant Colonel Alfred Burton, while the present rates of pay and allowances are in force, men enlisting in the above regiment who live in the London area will receive for themselves and families while living and messing, which means eating, at home pay at the following rates. With wife only, two pounds uh, man. One ten four per week. It's a ridiculous amount of. Um, I mean, it, it, it's. Then again, the military has never been known for paying a lot. When I joined the Air Force back in nineteen, you know, it's the mid nineties. Um, I remember my very first. Uh, they gave us a card to get paid. Basically, we were in boot camp, and um, they gave us something that looked like a credit card, and. I remember uh, my very first check came in, and I went to an ATM to see what it was, and it was like $700 for a whole month. 
Now, granted, they did pay for me. They did feed me. So, um... Uh, for the prosecute for the prosecution uh, number 757 Colonel Quartermaster Sergeant C Johnson 1st Battalion having been duly sworn states that he saw accused in the afternoon of November 1st 1914 was present when by Sergeant Major Mum since killed called the row in the morning november 2nd and the accused was absent it's desertion the accused declined to cross-examine basically it's a court-martial testimony here And to the for the defense, you see this the emboss, the the seal embossed on it. It's very cool. Um, yeah, he would have been shot. He he would have been shot. That's um just a personal feeling here. Um, maybe I'm over. Maybe I'm a little too sensitive, but. Uh, secret papers and execution deserves brutal. The way they describe it is a little on the uh, I mean, I know this was a hundred years ago, but you know, this is still someone's life. I mean, this is a real person who died. We're, we're we shouldn't joke or make light of stuff like this because somebody died here. That's what you're reading about. He was he was scared and he he made a he made a big mistake and he was probably put to death by firing squad. That's what happens. I don't think then or now we should joke about stuff like that. I don't think we should make light of things like this because this was real. I'm a little irritated that they would package it like that. It shows a, a, a marked lack of respect for the subject matter. Here we go again. Uh, this might be the same guys. Um, yeah. Um, proceedings of field general courts martial held for the trial number 3379, Private A. Smith, number 2222, Private T. Cummings, 1st Battalion, Irish Guards are forward herewith. These two cases of desertion with intent to evade active operations against the enemy are very clearly proved. The charges as framed, however, do not actually specify that these men were avoiding any particular important military service, but it was naturally within the judicial knowledge of the court that the battalion concern was during the greater portion of absence serving actively in the trenches against the enemy. These two cases are particularly heinous ones, and I hope that the extreme penalty which has been awarded by the court will be approved. There's handwritten down here. Um recommended that the two prisoners be shot signed by a general and dated and then defense charge alleged offender finding convicted sentence guilty to suffer death by being shot how dealt with so what you're looking at is the piece of paper that recorded the death of these two young men who were, you know, it's very sad. These were two young men, two real people who didn't want to be there. And they, you know, I was in the military. I mean, I, I understand desertion. I understand in a time of war, why they make rules like that. I totally do. But at the same time, it's not something we should joke about or look at with a light heart. That's why that packaging irks me a little bit. This is serious stuff. 
And I don't think we should make light of it ever. Not then, not now, not ever. World War One was an awful time period that's not ever, should never be looked at as a joke. Um, Women's National Land Service Corps. Appeal for recruits for agricultural war work. 1,000 educated women wanted at once. Skilled milkers and those who used to farm work. Partially trained workers, untrained women who can either go on the land at once in squads, receive a six months training first. So this is recruiting women on the home front. This isn't World War II. This is World War One. This is um, this is a good. This is showing how this was affecting everybody. Here we have um, some secret letters, some secret orders. 20th Century, 20th Infantry Br Brigade Operation Order Number 74. And I apologize for the, the horn honking, but my videos are real time. I don't do all the fancy editing. And, um, and so this is very interesting stuff. It's a whole packet. Machine guns, stokes, mortars, bombers. I mean, this is very cool. Signed in blood. And this is after action report showing casualties. map detail this is basically uh if i'm not mistaken a, um, yeah it's orders and, and after action reports for a military operation as we'd say nowadays This is the Wipers Times. This is like a like as I was describing as a zine that was published in the front lines by the troops, although it was managed to be printed. So um, satirical humor, like, unless you could call it a humor. It is humorous, and it's making fun of 1916, so we're two years into the war. I mean, this is just funny, but, um, sir, as the father of a large family and having two sons serving in the Tutin Beck Citizens Brigade, may I draw your attention to the danger from Zeppelins? Cannot our authorities deal with this menace in a more workmanlike way? My boys, who are well-versed in military affairs, suggest a high barbed wire entanglement being erected around the British Isles. Surely something can be done. It's just, uh... It's it's goofy, and it's supposed to be goofy. Um, this is a letter. Dear author, I expect you're all wondering why I have not written, but it is an awful effort to get all the correspondence off and be on act oh, I hit the camera. On active service at the same time. I cannot say that I am enjoying myself out here. It's awfully hot, and we are eaten up by millions of flies. Life in the trenches is not a picnic either. We have about four or five days out of them and eight or nine in them. When we are out, supposed to be resting, we have to go on working parties, digging, etc. Then, I think that, and then, uh, 
wherever we are, we always undersell fire, so it's not much rest after all. The last show we had in camp, there was four killed and 17 wounded. We've been under fire for three months now, and we should like a rest, as the strain is tremendous on one's nerves. I don't think the troops in France get it quite as bad. Then again, the only comforts we have are sent from home, as the country here is quite barren and we cannot buy anything in shops. I would give a quid for a pint of beer down the club. Our foot consists of half a loaf. Our food consists of half a loaf of bread per day, bacon and tea for breakfast, bully beef biscuits for dinner, and jam for tea and cheese. Lime juice is served out about four times per week. That is a drop is put into a dix of water and a cupful is served out permen and rum is served out twice a week. Sometimes that's about four tablespoonfuls each. We live in a trench and it's mercy. It don't rain. Otherwise, we'd be washed away. The fighting just lately has been terrible. Our shell shocks. Our shells knock the enemy always and the sight in the trenches that we take is awful. We wear our respirators because of the awful smell of the dead. I'll never get the sight out of my eyes and it will be everlasting nightmare. Um, if I am spared to come home, I'll be able to tell you all about it, but I cannot possibly write as words fail me. I can't describe things. Wouldn't it be nice to be at Walmer again and you come down and see me again? I did enjoy that time and also seeing Billy Dawson and Richardson. There seems to be a lot of fresh troops out here, but there seems to be no relief for us. Nobody loves us. Now Churchill has gone and we're nobody's pets. It's the army first here, except when there is work to be done. And then the naval division have to do it. You know, both my brothers have commissions in the 4th Bedfordshire's and are at Dover Court. My wife tells me she has sent me three boxes of stuff. I received one box, and I fear that the one transport has floundered and another has been torpedoed, so I expect that is where the other two boxes are. It's awfully disappointing because I look forward so to a bit of chocolate and a few biscuits from home. We get cigarettes and backy served out to us, but it, it, it is too hot to smoke much. So that I don't miss that so much. I get to have a bath in a biscuit tin when I can, but when in the trenches I have to go in all the time without a war so you can tell I'm used to being dirty. How are they all down in the club? And is Emmy still there? And is she better or not? Is Pace going to lose this year? And where are you spending your holidays? Lord, how I'd like a holiday. I am so tired and would give anything to get away from this continual banging. Please remember me to all the fellows who are left in the office. Mr. Miller and Goff and Hills and George Williams and all the boys generally. I can't write to all separately, and also for the details of my experiences, you must wait till I get back, if I ever, if ever I do, of which sometimes I despair. The papers tell me pretty full accounts, although they are rather anticipating events as to our advancing. Now I must close, old chap, and thank you very much for your kindness. Wishing you all the best. Yours very sincerely, Harold Watts. And that's, uh bled through the uh from the envelope wow it's first hand account of uh of what life was like for these young men in the trenches and that was as, that was as brutal and real as it gets to read something like that That was interesting to read. I hope you found that interesting too. This is um, base sensor. It's a censored letter. It's got that little crown stamp on it. It's been signed off on pre-printed envelope. This envelope must not be used for coin or valuables. It cannot be accepted for registration. Correspondence in this envelope uh, need not be censored regimentally. The 
contents are liable to examination at the base. The following certificate must be signed by the writer. I certify on my honor that the contents of this envelope refer to nothing but private and family matters. And it's signed with two X's. So he might have had a writer do the writing for him. Now this is a letter. He m more likely had someone write it for him. He was, probably didn't know how to write. My darling Lois, my darling love, <laughs> thanks so very much for your letter of the 28th and glad to know you're in the pink like this child since last wrote we have had rather severe touch of weather lacking of surprises those been thinking a lot about i think that's where he's from as you know who the dickens should it's very hard to read the writing but It's neat to see. This is a really great set. That's a, what the envelope would have looked like if it would have come in. Here's are some posters, and I don't know if they're going to fit. But I'll show them to you. I don't think they'll fit inside of a... Without, I could fold them in. Or I might put them... Step into your place, and it shows the civilians... Uh, sort of transition into soldiers, into a line of soldiers, and they and it fades away. And on the other side, it's the Second City of London Battalion Royal Fusiliers. Recruits required at once to compete in this fine battalion uniform and, and necessaries immediately on enlistment. Army rates of pay and allowances. God save the king. is it is far better to face the bullets than to be killed at home by a bomb the Germans would send these zeppelins to bomb London for air raids women of Britain say go this is um, like the whole four feathers thing you know they were using the threat of um, you know women did you ever watch Downton Abbey? When did you do you remember the scene when World War One had happened and the women came in and they presented white feathers to any one of you know fighting age who wasn't in uniform? It was they were chicken feathers, so they used that as a way to to get people to join. You know, I'm not I'm not here to judge the, the right or wrong of it, but it is what it is. That's what was done. I'm going to put these all the way all the way back here and put these so they can be flat. No? There's something in the way here. I don't want to, I don't want to screw these up.
when I had the the binder open, I ended up knocking some pages out, but it only takes a second to put them back in. nice posters in the front part yeah that way it'll be protected uh, let's get this packet open so I think we got another poster and this is um the veteran's farewell. Goodbye, my lad. I only wish I were young enough to go with you. Enlist now. And I'm back. Daddy, what did you do in the Great War? And you see the little kids playing with toy soldiers. And the little daughter is looking at a book about the history of the war. And the father. Of course, the sentiment here is this man didn't serve. So he's ashamed and he can't tell his kids that he set it out. So that's uh now here we have the Illustrated War News. This is a magazine. It was eight pence by Inland Post. And this is from nineteen December fifth, nineteen seventeen. We have a picture of a, a really stirring picture of a tank going over, you know, a big old hill of dirt. And this says a tank. <laughs> this is the back. Um, the finest record. Royal Flying Corps. Uh, a much reduced reproduction of the cover. This remarkable book dealing with the work and training of the Royal Flying Corps. So this is an ad for this book. Uh, this is probably something you could find on a newsstand. And so this was a, a really nice book about air power. And we have reports of the Great War. In the Western Front, a salvo from heavy batteries for the Bosch. After our troops had entered it in the village of Marcoin. On the Western Front, testing telephone lines near the advanced trenches. A field dressing station in the foreground, German shelling Manchi. There's some naval pictures, giant naval cannons. Look at that. This is some great photography in this magazine. Crossing ground won from the enemy. A reserve line rode with pack horses, cavalry, artillery, and motor machine guns going forward. Near the Lavacri and Ribbit Court, Rifleman Pioneers, East Country Troop Spoils. Some scenes from the trenches. Gigantic guns. They made these huge. They had one called Big Bertha. This huge, huge artillery uh, designed to destroy and level whole towns and villages. Here's a great picture of German prisoners. Fallen in the hands, up and guarded by a man from the Irish med regiments that captured them. German prisoners near Havern Court. And uh, you got your one British soldier with his Enfield rifle 
and all of these German prisoners, knowing they're being photographed. Interesting how the British soldiers shaved and all the German soldiers have that same mustache with just a few exceptions. More prisoners of war. Kind of posing for the picture. Yeah, I think many of these people had never been photographed. German fighters shot down. Shot down German plane filling a Maxim's water water jacket this is a maxim gun it's a machine gun and that big tube that big cylinder is full of water to keep the barrel cool they called it a water jacket uh british tanks these huge monstrous sublime tanks women in the war nurses at the home front helping the war effort a really wonderful reproduction of a, of a wartime magazine, the Illustrated War News. Just, just uh, really one of the things I really like about these sets. And let's go ahead and uh, put this in here. This is a binder I love to just open up and flip through. And I love to add stuff like this to it. After the, before I end the video, I'll flip through and show you all the different pages I've accumulated of history through all of this stuff okay what do we have here this is a on newsprint a newspaper the daily graphic and it, uh i wish i had a binder big enough to put this whole thing in to flatten it out but in fact what i might end up doing is putting it with my stack of uh newspapers so It can get flat. This is from London, Wednesday, August 12th, 1914. And this daily graphic has photographs. And it's your typical newspaper. Births, marriages, and deaths. We have war news, of course. But we also have ads for holiday resorts, hotels, travel, amusements at the Crystal Palace, uh, art galleries, the Royal Academy, shipping Australia and the Orient. Face of the sky, forecast, fine and warm with light breezes. Paris and shutters, the shopless city, the shopless city, <laughs> notable men at the front. The battle begun, cavalry fighting in Belgium, Germans repulsed west of Liege, Fort's mystery. So there's all the different stories. This was very early in the war, 1914. Private Wilhelm of Lipp, who is reported to have been killed during the assault on Liege. No, I guess he was a prince. German attack in Alsace. And we got a motor car. London in the wartime, unfamiliar scenes in a familiar setting. Political cartoon. Some pictures of the damage. And this is only 1914. Men learning to shoot. You get it, when you see pictures like this, you realize this is the beginning of the war. It almost still seems like a novelty. It, it, it hasn't set in yet. You find if you read if you read old Civil War newspapers and so forth, you'll find the same attitudes. It's interesting like that. I do want 
put this in a sleeve to keep this with. I just think this is a, something that belongs in this set. So just have the one middle fold. I, like I said, I would like to press the whole thing out with my other newspapers, but it really belongs in this set. Okay, and finally we get to this last part, which is cards. And we'll just uh, go through them. Some of them can be filed, I think, in pages like this. Um, Ministry of Munitions of War admits to headquarters, offices, some kind of... This pass must be shown on demand and on termination of service must be returned to establish Estab G. So it's like a pass. Um... We have postcards. Let's check them out. Um, soldier with a gas mask on. Gas was one of the things, that, mustard gas in particular was used. It was uh, banned after the war for obvious reasons, for the awfulness it caused. And you see patients being treated at a hospital very scary images. If you look at that. Young officer. Um, this is a uh, medical, the, the physical, the military physical. I had to go through one. Everyone had to go through one. Um, This is a card you could put your name on. Pioneer FL Fellows is serving King Country and Empire. The money paid for this card benefits the British Red Cross Society. So he s signed this and he probably made a donation to the Red Cross. And then there's a on the back uh, Lord uh, Kitchener's message to the army. And it, I'll read it. It says... You were ordered abroad as soldiers of the king to help our French comrades against the invasion of a common enemy. You have to perform a task which will need your courage, your energy, and patience. Remember that the honor of the British Empire depends on your individual conduct. It will be your duty not only to set an example of discipline and perfect steadiness under fire, but also to maintain the most friendly relations with those whom you are helping in this struggle. The operations in which you are engaged will for the most part take place in a friendly country, and you can do your country no better service than by showing yourselves in France and Belgium in the true character of a British soldier. Be invariably courteous, considerate, and kind. Never do anything likely to injure or destroy property, and always look upon looting as a disgraceful act. You are sure to meet with a welcome and to be trusted. Your conduct must justify that welcome and that trust. Your duty cannot be done unless your health is sound, so be constantly on your guard against any excesses. That means don't drink too much and stay away from the stay away from the uh, Moulin Rouge. Um, in this new experience, you may find temptations both in wine and women. You must entirely resist both temptations, and while treating all women with perfect courtesy, you should avoid any intimacy. Do your duty bravely, for God honor the king. So, um, they really put that part about intimacy in there because uh, they didn't want syphilis and gonorrhea to prevent you from doing your... I'm not saying that everyone had that, but it, it happens, especially in time of war. And um, venereal disease becomes a huge problem. Um, Lord Kirchner, that's the man who wrote that message. And there's a picture of a tank. It says one of our tanks. Passed by censor. This is a soldier's pay book. For use on active service. And uh, this was how you kept track of your pay. You will produce this book whenever you require an advance of cash on account. You will give a receipt on the... Uh, act, um, acquaintance role of the officer paying you for all cash advances made to you 
Uh, the officer making the payment will sign the corresponding entry in this book on the page for cash payments. You will make no entries in this book except to sign your name on pages 3 and 7 and make and to make your will and if you so desire on page 14. Should you lose your book, you will at once report the loss to your commanding officer. A new book will be obtained if possible from the accountant, but it must be understood that no pay can be issued in respect of the period before the date on which you report your loss until you're finally settled with. To your information here. And... Huh. Interesting. A short form of will. It had a will already in the book, so. In the event of my death, I give whole of my property and effects to my wife, Sarah Lai. That's his will. It's, um, this is First City of London Regiment, Royal Fusiliers, recruits wanted immediately. A local regiment for local men and on that's a recruiting ad uh, how only third class railway ticket guy was on leave and this is his plane his train ticket a free meal is provided to men and women of all forces each Sunday at 6 and Saturday at 6. We are anxious to help you. Come and receive a real Glasgow welcome at the tent hall. Oh, that's nice. Some more postcards. Let's do this. Go through these. Uh, the prisoner of war notification. Kind of like the form letter we saw for the, the casualty. It's like a form letter. I am quite well. He's not. He hasn't been admitted to the hospital or anything. So this is a Red Cross inspection of a German prison camp. And then they would send the information. Military Service Act 1916 Certificate of Exemption. Exempted from military service. Probably didn't want that at this time. I mean, you had to have it if you weren't in service, but you might still get that white feather. Charles Ration Book. And ration Stamps. Uh, something that was probably hung on a door to tell you that you need to close your window blinds to do blackouts. We got some more postcards to look at here. Let's separate them. Picture postcards with little poems on them. Till the boys come home. Just one about the Air Force. Take me back to my dear old Blighty. <laughs> Out for victory. With the, the munition girl. England expects every woman to do her duty. Tommy Lad. Star shell bursting near British lines. It's a picture of an explosion. Picture of the trenches. Tommy's at home in the German dugouts. Then uh, some French and British soldiers sharing cigarettes. So. Uh, Glory 
glory of our allies. And you have a British flag and a French flag. So, um, 1914 and 1915. Of course, the war would go on until 1918. So, to wrap up, it's time I'm enjoying with you here, but let's just um, show you the book. It starts in the 1800s. And we have lots of different things. And if you've watched my videos, you've probably seen a lot of these documents then we get to Jack the Ripper these are Jack the Ripper suspects newspapers we get to the part we just covered Then we get to the 1920s. So we got all this 1920s stuff, dances. And it's really cool. Really fun set to have. Then we get to World War II. Candy wrappers and children's stuff like the tags that were tagged on children, recipes. Mr. Churchill. A lot of Churchill stuff, buttons, and the more World War II stuff. See yeah, another Red Cross club like we saw. Glenn Miller, some uh, guides for military soldiers, and. Let me know if you want me to do a more in-depth uh, video of this stuff. Airborne patch. And uh, Yank Magazine is in the back. So I hope you, hope you enjoyed all these, this video. And if you want to see more of my collection sometime, please leave me a comment and let me know. And uh, I'm glad to do another video and i have another round that i'm going to put into this book Look how thick it is uh and it's titanic stuff so um and i'll be getting to that pretty soon so you have that to look forward to if you enjoyed this so anyway i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you like my channel please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon leaving a thumbs up and a comment and all of that does a lot to help my channel and um I really enjoyed spending some time with you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.